good morning good afternoon and good evening depending upon which part of the world you are first of all thank you very much to everyone for being with us today we are pleased to welcome you all virtually i am sure during this pandemic you and your family members you all are keeping safe and that has forced us to have the first asia pacific hepatitis summit on a virtual platform here we are going to use the technology and i'm sure with the advantage of technology we all are connected all across the globe as we all know on 28 july every year we celebrate the world hepatitis day and it takes this also helps all of us to bring together under a single theme to raise awareness of the global burden for viral hepatitis and to influence the change in 2020 the theme for this year is find the missing millions without finding the underdiagnosed as well as the linking to the care millions will continue to suffer and we will lose lives on world hepatitis day the international institute for human development global alliance for elimination of hepatitis and elets we have come together to organize our first asia pacific hepatitis summit and this is particularly towards addressing the issues and the challenges in the resource constrained countries we will focus exclusively on one of the most practical challenge of addressing the public health issue of viral hepatitis that is how to find the missing millions the entire summit has a day agenda which we have divided into three sessions the first session we are going to talk about the pragmatic lessons learned and technological innovations that can advance delivery of hepatitis b and c in asia pacific countries and globally in the second session we have strategies in terms of public and private partnership which helps the government to address the access and the affordability in the third session which is going to be most important we are going to involve how the civil society and the affected communities should get engaged or come together to address these challenges it is my pleasure to share that this summit is a virtual gathering of policy makers leading companies entrepreneurs ngos academic institutions scientists and researchers and all other stakeholders who share a common interest in practical solutions to address this issue a very warm welcome to one and each and every one of you before we get started on behalf of the organizing team i would like to specifically acknowledge the contribution and our collaborating partners find india world hepatitis alliance kims who is our knowledge partner and vikas samukhya we could not have done this without you with this remarks may i now request the convener of this summit dr john who is also the director of global hepatitis elimination alliance to take over and start the proceeding of session 1 good day everyone thank you so much for sign it's really a pleasure to be part of this uh, first asia summit to talk about a key intervention necessary to do effectively to reach our hepatitis elimination goals and that's hepatitis testing to detect those living with hepatitis b and hepatitis c for them to receive the services they need to protect their health and the health of others uh, i think in the interest of time i will not um, 
I show my slides, but just briefly to say I'm, I'm the director of the Coalition for Global Hepatitis Elimination at the Task Force for Global Health, a uh, organization uh, that I brought together uh, about one year ago to build a community of practice for, uh, for partners of all types to come together so that we work more effectively to achieve our elimination goals at the subnational, national, and global level. Um, we uh, put together uh, country dashboards for over 190 countries, provide technical assistance, conduct operational research, and uh, conduct um, uh, different uh, advocacy, in, 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 uh, including recognizing uh, hepatitis elimination champions doing great work uh, all around the globe. And I in, uh, urge you all to go to um, globalhep.org to learn more about uh, the coalition. Um, when we thinking about the country dashboards, we put together a, a global uh, report card that we're putting out today to again emphasize that about 257 million people are living with hepatitis B, mm -hmm. 71 million are living with hepatitis C, 41 percent of, uh, of, um, of 555 deaths, uh, uh, 555,000 deaths from hepatitis B are in the Ciro and Wipro regions of WHO, and of the 542,000 deaths of hepatitis C, about 35% of those are in those two Asian uh, regions. Um, now, when we look at the goals for hepatitis uh, B and C elimination, as they re relate to mortality, the interim goal for this year is a 10% decline in mortality and a 65% decline by, um, by uh, 2030. Now, key intervention for that is obviously testing, but by WHO estimations, only about 10% of that population living with hepatitis B, 19% of the people living with hepatitis C have been diagnosed. And, and of those, only about four and a half million of that 257 million have received care for B, and only about 5 million for C. Uh, and so that's really a major challenge that we're going to be talking through today. When you look at progress toward those elimination goals, that 10% decline in mortality as your first step, only uh, 25 countries uh, by our estimation have achieved those declines since 2015 and only four countries for, uh, have achieved those declines for hepatitis C. So we have quite a ways to go. Um, so how do we begin to tackle that testing problem is what we're looking at today. When we think of, when I think about the testing um, issues, um, using just hepatitis C as an example, uh, you have different issues. One is just the complexity of the test, typically it's a two-step process, antibody testing followed by some virologic assay. Uh, so that creates some complexity at the point of care level. Um, you have a lack of testing policies and lack of, um, of um, a direction as to which target population should be best uh, focused on to, to get the maximum impact of a testing uh, program. Um, Oftentimes, you don't have data to, to know um, how well you're doing, who's being tested, what are the gaps. So data is very important. Uh, the cost of testing uh, continues to be an issue. Uh, the, uh, the point of care testing can be fairly inexpensive in some countries, 30 cents a test, but very expensive relatively in others, over $2. The particular challenge is that virologic tests, which can range from a low of $9 to a high of $70 in some countries, depending on the variety of factors. You know, in comparison, the global fund price for hepatitis C test treatment now is only $79. So you really have testing uh, costs rivaling the, or even exceeding the cost of treatment. So that is a particular uh, challenge. So there's some opportunities from some technological improvements to, uh, to continue to make uh, testing simpler and perhaps even more affordable. And these same issues are there for hepatitis B, 
and we'll be uh, exploring those. So again, the issues of uh, the right technology, the right policy, how do you apply that at the clinical level in a way that is acceptable, uh, financing, and then data to know how well you're do uh, doing to drive continual program improvement. So please keep those um, uh, different aspects of testing in mind uh, as we begin to look at the different aspects of, um, of um, testing. Um, uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Uh, Grover, who is the uh, State Program Officer at the Department of Health and Family Welfare in the Government of Punjab, to talk a, to more about the um, hepatitis uh, elimination project uh, underway uh, in Punjab. Uh, Dr. Grover? Thank you, John, and thank you, organizers. I'm a, uh, for organizing such a good webinar and giving Punjab a chance to present uh, the work in hepatitis. I can see Dr. Sanjay Sareen and Prashant and others also there who have been associated with us for a long time. Uh, if you allow, can I share the screen and presentation? Yes, please. And if Prashant can help me in that. Are you able to see share your screen, Dr. Gagan? Uh, Prashant, not able to. If you can help me in that. Okay. I think you have it. Uh, thank you, Prashant. Can you do me a favor if you have the uh, presentation with you? Can you do that? You can present until next. So in the back end, we'll change the slides. Can you go with the slide? Uh, are you able to see the first slide? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Next slide. Yes. Please proceed. Yeah. So uh, we are going for how to find missing millions. And just a brief about the program that we started the state program as a state level initiative in 2016 June. And the treatment was started at 25 treatment centers initially. And we had a model treatment center at PGI Chandigarh for our complicated cirrhotic cases. And as uh, the state and uh, national government developed their national viral hepatitis uh, control program, we adopted the guidelines in September 18. And now all the baseline tests, viral loads, and drugs are being provided free of cost to all the patients. Next, please. So to start with, uh, we were uh, going for the expansion of the program. Uh, so we had MOU signed with fine on World Hepatitis Day by our then Honorable Health Minister in 28 July 17. And uh, our diagnostics was a challenge, as John was asking. It's always a challenge. And at that point of time, our first partner was uh, fine, who supported us in starting a project where all the PLHIV is coming to 13 ART centers were started and taken up for the project for screening of hepatitis C. Under the same project, and we expanded the project in 2019 to 11 OST centers for screening of all the IVDUs, which are registered under Punjab State AIDS Control Societies. And during lockdown period, when the PLHIVs and others, they were not able to come to our hospitals and to do the handholding, all the treatments and diagnostic part has been shifted to the ART and OST centers from April 2020 where the PLHIs and IVDUs, they are being tested and treated in their centers. In 2016, we started with 25 treatment centers, and now we have expanded to 60 treatment centers in 2020. And we are providing services at 22 district hospitals, three medical colleges, 13 ART centers, 11 OST centers, one subdivisional hospital we have started as a decentralized 
expansion of that project. Nine central prisons and one PGI Chandigarh. So we are now in Punjab providing services to 60. In 2019, uh, again, uh, with FINE, we expanded the program for screening of all the inmates in the prisons of the Punjab. There are around 26 prisons. And we have started with nine central prisons. And we have started again in collaboration and uh, fine for screening of all the inmates in all the central prisons. Next, please. So in expansion, uh, we started with screening. If I go by just timelines from 2016 and MOU with fine in with 2017, screening of 13 ARTs in October 18, recruitment of all the district and state staff in August 19. From September 19, we have done uh, got away with the viral load cost. Patients are not paying anything for the viral load. Earlier, the cost was high. I'll come to the next slide in that. In September 19, we went to a uh, screening of 11 overstate centers and now central prisons. Next slide, please. Apart from hepatitis C, we have gone now with expansion of services for hepatitis B screening. So we started screening of hepatitis B in January 2020. It was initially for pregnant women and high risk groups. Now we have expanded it to 50,000 PLHIVs and 50,000 OSTs from uh, August onwards. They will be screened. And all those who will be hepatitis B negative at these ART and OST sites will be vaccinated for hepatitis B. Within the next 10 to 15 days, we are uh, procuring hepatitis B immunoglobulins for the newborns who will be born to hepatitis B infective mothers. Next. If I uh, go by the cost, like the baseline testing, NTSCV, ELISA, and RDT, CBC, LFT, RFT, IN. They're all free, of course, in all our centers. And next slide, please. If I come to the simple algorithm and the graphs on the right side, the price of viral load, which was being offered to the patients at 2,200 Indian rupees in 2016 was 881, that is roughly around 11 to $12. It is now free of cost to the patients. The government is bearing all the costs from 2019 September. So the viral load test is free. So patient doesn't have to pay anything from baseline test to viral load test. And as far as treatment cost is concerned, we started with a round uh, package of around 20,000 plus Indian rupees for 12 weeks treatment is now roughly uh, 2,500 uh, for three weeks, which comes out to be around $33. And it's almost the government is paying for all this treatment part also. Next slide. If I come to the absolute numbers in 2016 to 2019, we are enrolling and putting almost 16,000 to 20,000 patients on treatment of hepatitis C. This year till uh, June, the number is 6106, which is mainly due to uh, COVID where our average monthly enrollment is around 1,200 to 1,500 patients per month. It came down to 250 in April, but we have picked up in June. We have enrolled 840 uh, patients. And in July till yesterday, we had enrolled around uh, 840 patients. So we are coming back to the track. And I'm hopeful by August or September, the enrollment will be again 2,000 to 1,200 patients per month. Next. In absolute numbers, again, just a simple cascade. We have totally screened 163,000 1, persons. Out of those, 1,20,000 was someone already positive. 85,000, they have been put on treatment till date. Almost 70,000 have completed the treatment. Out of those, 67,000 were SVR eligible. We have got the SVR test done of 52,000. SVR achieved is 48%. If I go with this figures from SVR done, the SVR is 93%. If I take it from SVR eligible, so we are success rate of more than 90% we are having. SVR not achieved, the failures are around 3,500 and these patients are being referred to now model treatment centers for second line treatment. Next. If I go by district wise, it's not the simple thing. And we have 22 districts and Sangrur has a maximum load of 10,000 with but Hancourt having uh, the lesser load of 366 is the range we have. Next slide, please. If we go by the uh, spot maps on the left, uh, we can see 
the districts as per the absolute numbers which have the more load and on the right uh, we have got the per thousand population uh, percent population we have calculated the few districts in a certain belt which are having a uh, prevalence and now we are planning to go for a study on risk factor assessment with the chai and uh, pgi to ascertain the risk factors in these areas so that policies could be made for harm reduction next I've discussed the slide, we have decreased and now we are coming back to the normal and I hope that by next month uh, we will be in the same range of 1200 uh, patients per month. Next slide, please. No if I go by the outcome, as I was discussing, if I take uh, the person enrolled for testing and cured, it will be around 93%. And if I take the total person eligible, the cure is 72% and the person who SVR is pending, but they have completed the treatment, it's around 22%. If I club those, the success is around 94%, uh, which is quite a uh, quite good number. And failures is around 5.3% and default is around 45% uh, again that. Next slide. So we saw a drastic decline due to COVID, but that gave us a ample opportunity to contact all our patients who were due for treatment from peer support. So we were able to contact all the persons who were not coming for treatment. We could contact them and send even medicines to a few patients at their homes who were in the containment zones. And at the same time, uh, we were able to correct and rectify all the portal entries, all the digital entries. We had the plenty of time to do that and all the digitization work was completed. And with this constant calling, the default rate, which increased to around 24% uh, in uh, April and May, has come down to just 8% in June now. Next. So uh, these are the achievements which I've already uh, briefed. We have viral load free now. We have increased model treatment centers for testing. Treatment centers have increased, screening and treatment from ART sites and SDH Batala Gurdaspur is a new treatment center from today for ART since it is an ART center for ease of the PLHIV is coming to that place. Next. Uh, screening of hepatitis C at 10 district prisons we are going to roll out in collaboration with FINE for diagnosis of the, all the inmates who will be in the district prisons and now we are working out to screening of hepatitis C at all the detection center for IVD use, which is being launched in coming months. And already hepatitis B, it's not only hepatitis C, now we have started with four years experience of hepatitis. Now from this year, we have started with hepatitis B screening and the management will be started very soon with uh, screening of PLHIVs and OSTs at, uh, to start with in pregnant women. And we have uh, research projects with the CHI and PGI to know the loss to follow up and the risk factor assessment of hepatitis C in Punjab. Next. Uh, can you click one more time uh, just for thanks? So I must thank you all the patients who have come. This was uh, yesterday we celebrated and released our four year journey uh, of Punjab's hepatitis program by Honorable Health Minister Punjab and our additional chief secretary health and all the dignitaries. And we have released IEC posters for awareness of general public for hepatitis C and B. And at this juncture, I'm very thankful to find uh, who helped us in going for screening of all the high risk groups, Chai in helping us in all digitization, and nevertheless, ECO for extending uh, the, sharing the knowledge to the decentralized manner, and we could go to the medical specialist and paramedical staff with the help of those. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great description of a program uh, escalating with very much a focus on high risk populations. Now let's turn to Dr. Wakid from, uh, from Egypt to, uh, to learn about the Egyptian program and a, you know, a large population based uh, screening program that's been highly successful in getting uh, millions of people uh, treated for hepatitis C. Amal? Um, good day, everybody, and uh, I uh, would like to start by thanking the organizers and uh, Dr. John Ward for allowing me to uh, give this presentation. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to share uh, what we did in Egypt and how we uh, got to find the missing millions 
and uh, get them on uh, treatment. Uh, I hope you can uh, be uh, seeing my slides. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, un until 2016, we, we, in Egypt, we had the highest prevalence of hepatitis C in the world. And the 2015 National uh, Health Survey, the pre uh, prevalence of hepatitis C viremia was 7%. And that meant we, that at that time we had around 5.5 million patients chronically infected with hepatitis C. This put Egypt as the fourth country in the world with the number of patients, with 5.5 million after the China, Pakistan, and India, although you had much uh, more population. And we, we started a national treatment program in 2006 that was based on interferon therapy. We established uh, specialized hepatitis treatment centers all over the country. In 2014, uh, we, we set uh, elimination goals for 2030, so that by 2030, we will have the uh, prevalence of hepatitis C in Egypt less than 1%. Uh, we, uh, the plan had to diagnose and treat more than 350,000 patients a year to decrease and decrease the incidence. We were able to uh, arrange with uh, Gilead affordable access prices for Sovoscovir, and then with the uh, start and uh, going on, on the, of the program, uh, we started manufacturing uh, local genetics. And by mid-2018, uh, 2.4 million people had started treatment. This uh, graph shows the number of people registering for treatment monthly. And uh, until 2000, mid-2017, you can see that the curve was uh, getting uh, lower. and uh, all these patients were patients who were living with the diagnosis. They were coming forward for treatment. We had not started looking for uh, patients. And uh, in mid-2017, when the numbers registering for treatment came way below the number necessary for achieving the elimination goals by 2030, we had uh, estimated that uh, there were at least two to three million uh, patients living with undiagnosed that is C infection and were not being treated. We started uh, first screening campaigns uh, that were small campaigns. We identified over a year around 60,000 patients through uh, mobile teams that went visiting villages and neighborhoods uh, for a day or two. This was not very successful because tests were ELISA based. Uh, we, we had to get the blood sample, take it to the lab, next day report the, uh, the results back, look for the patient, uh, the positive patients, and get them back for testing and viral load. Uh, this was not very convenient and resulted in patient loss. And the mobile units used to visit each neighborhood for a day or two, so people who are not there or, or did not attend uh, were, were not found. And the new cases decreased even further to a very low numbers by mid 2018. So in 2018, we, we decided to start a national screening campaign that was sponsored by the president. It was to screen everybody in Egypt for a very short while uh, to find all the patients with hepatitis C and treat them all. Uh, first, we started by screening everybody above the age of 18, which are 62. 5 million persons, and uh, to screen all children above the age of 12 if their parents signed a consent. We changed the screening uh, test to a rapid uh, diagnostic test using a blood drop that was uh, from a Korean manufacturer uh, that was uh, acquired by Abby, and we managed to decrease the cost at that time in 2018 to 56 cents instead of uh, two to three dollars before uh, the program. And uh, we managed to decrease the viral load test to less than five dollars or 4.8 dollars using the uh, Ro Roche uh, PCRs. At the same time, we were able to decrease the treatment cost to a little less than 45 dollars. Uh, all hospitals in the country, all primary health clinics, rural health facilities uh, were part participated. We divided the country into three phases of two to three months each with a target population of 18 to 24 million to be screened over the two to three months. 
uh, we had 20,000 medical teams uh, working in 4,000 to 6,000 screening sites in each phase. They worked nine hours a day from nine to nine, seven days a week, no holidays, even on weekends, and national holidays and religious holidays. They did not stop for the whole uh, duration. This was augmented by mobile units that used to visit uh, mosques on Fridays, churches on Sundays, uh, clubs during games, uh, subway stations and so on. A huge media campaign, billboard everywhere, TV, radio. And patients who tested positive in a screening site were electronically immediately linked to uh, an evaluation and treatment center. And all data was entered through PCs or hand, hand devices to a central server via cellular networks. So we had uh, real-time data of the numbers of people coming for screening, the numbers being positive minute by minute in a central uh, op operating uh, room. The patient flow, patients came first on the first visit to a screening site. They were tested for uh, rapid diagnostic test for hepatitis uh, C antibody. And uh, also they were tested for blood pressure, blood sugar, and uh, obesity uh, on, on the side. Uh, patients were referred to positive to a central uh, lab where they had a viral load count. And then if they were positive, they were contacted to, and referred to an evaluation center to have an ultrasound, uh, liver labs and uh, renal tests and alpha keto protein and uh, then uh, they were uh, when the results came back they were brought in for uh, dispensing treatment and follow up after treatment this took four visits uh, we did not do any on treatment monitoring patients got the treatment and then came came three months after the end of treatment for evaluation of uh, uh, of an SBR. However, this step, visit number two, between visit number two and visit number three, there were some patient loss and there were some uh, crowding because we used to get at least 10,000 patients a day who were positive and needed uh, a viral load confirmation. So very early in the program when we saw that this was causing patient loss and problems, we decided to uh, decrease the number of visits Everybody who tested antibody positive went to the evaluation center at a viral load, viral load, ultrasound, liver tests, and so on. So even uh, before knowing the viral load results and if they were PCR positive or negative, they had their liver checked. So if they were positive, they uh, were recalled for uh, treatment dispensing and follow-up. This decreased the number of visits and uh, assisted in increasing the patient uh, can this be uh, simplified further? Can we uh, have one visit for doing everything and uh, giving the patients treatment in the end? We, we had a program, a very small program in Egypt, where in a screening site, we did a viral load test and then a point of care, uh, an antibody test, followed by a point of care viral load test with the results within one hour. And if positive, they had an ultrasound a fibro scan done on, in the field on the site and uh, labs and then dispensing treatment if they needed and then follow up later. This program was a small pilot uh, test, screen and treat treatment in the same day from nine to five, uh, an antibody in expert RNA, uh, mobile lab, mobile ultrasound and fibro scan in 30 minutes. Uh, the group screen for 475 patients in a village and managed to give treatment to 40 of the 43 who were viremic in the same day. This would only be applicable in small scale programs if you are testing <clears throat> a small uh, group of patients. It cannot be applied to the huge program that uh, we have or the national screening program. Uh, this is what I showed you earlier, <clears throat> the, da the daily or uh, patient flow. Uh, initially, and then with the small screening, and then with the start of the national screening campaign, the numbers increased from 2,000 patients to 250,000 patients a day. We were able to screen 250,000 patients a day, 
and the results uh, of the 62.5 million target, we managed to screen 50 million or 80% of the target population. We discovered 2.2 million uh, antibody positive or seropositive patients, 4.6% of the screened population. In the children, we screened 12 million, uh, 7 million of the 12 million target in the age of 12 to 18. And the uh, prevalence of hepatitis C antibody was much less, 0.3%. Uh, of the 2.2 uh, million antibody positive, 1.65 million were viremic. 92% started treatment until uh, September 2019. We know uh, the virological outcome for 82% of those who finished uh, treatment and finished follow up. And 98.8% of these were cured and achieved an SVR12. So we were able cure uh, around 1.4 uh, million of the 1.6 million who were viremic at that time. And the total cost of the screening and treatment program was only 207 million uh, US dollars. Identifying a viremic patient costed 70 dollars to, to screen, find, uh, confirm, and evaluate uh, a viremic patient. And the cost of curing a patient was only 114 US dollars. So in comparison to the burden of hepatitis C disease economically in the country, this is a very, very, very low uh, cost. And uh, this summarizes the, uh, the national treatment uh, program in Egypt that uh, went on from uh, October 2018 till end of uh, May 2019. We are still currently have uh, screening centers ongoing, but the numbers coming, only 12.5 million others have not been screened. These are uh, still coming, but in much lower numbers, and the prevalence of the C is uh, getting much lower. Now we estimate that the prevalence of the C viremia has gone down from 7% to less than 0.5%, or uh, roughly 0.4 percent, and that there are only uh, between 300,000 and 400,000 patients who have not been identified and treated in Egypt, down from a uh, huge number of 5.5 million. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Imam. Um, excellent presentation, overview of a really one of the more uh, uh, remarkable accomplishments in public health, I believe, in the in this uh, century. And it really shows all the essential elements of an effective uh, treatment program. Uh, uh, so there are many lessons learned from uh, from from that presentation. Uh, one of those, though, is the importance of uh, political commitment uh, and planning. And we saw some evidence of that in the Punjab presentation as well. And so uh, we'd like to turn over to Dr. Bashani now to talk uh, about the uh, uh, the national planning for hepatitis B and hepatitis C prevention and elimination in, in India. Uh, Dr. Bashani, please. Thank you, Dr. John. Uh, can somebody share my slides? Well, you already seen the glimpse of uh, Punjab. Uh, in India, it's mainly the state governments that uh, have to implement the national health programs. Uh, can you go to the next slide? And uh, the good thing is that any public health programs of uh, national importance are taken up by the central government, the government of India. And uh, viral hepatitis also came in that particular group of diseases. And government of India started national viral hepatitis control program covering all hepatitis, not just B and C, but also A and E. I'll just give you a glimpse of objective strategies and challenges of that program. Next, please. Uh, this program was started uh, somewhere in 2018 uh, under National Health Mission. As you know, we have many vertical programs, but now the, since 2005, most of these programs have been put under National Health Mission uh, by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So the estimates are given here, but they are just estimates because we don't know actually what the pool of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Operational guidelines were also uh, published in 2018, 
and in 2019 february the national action plan was also released by the government to help these states to implement it next please now the approach was to make it as a public health approach and uh, as you could see in the punjab uh, approach also it was virtually a public health approach uh, poor should be given free diagnostic and treatment though programs do say for everybody but i personally feel that with the limited cost at least those who cannot afford the treatment or diagnosis should be given free of cost uh, this was in line with the uh, the uh, sdg uh, 3.3 uh, it was uh, targeted that we will eliminate hepatitis c by 2030 and also significant reduction in morbidity and mortality due to hepatitis b a as well as e though most of the mortalities are because of b and c due to cirrhosis and uh, liver cancer government of india did allocate quite significant amount of uh, budget for the states roughly 120 million for the first 3 years of the program that shows the support that central government gives to the states both financially as well as technically next please so the strategy was uh, for prevention was hepatitis b vaccination as a part of uh, national immunization control program was started way back about 10 years back but safety of blood and blood products so that we can screen all the donors b and c and rule it out and injection safety on the treatment and diagnosis side screening of pregnant women for hepatitis b surface antigen particularly those districts where the institutional delivery was less as they expected that those where the institutional delivery is almost there they can be given a zero dose of hepatitis b or to the newborn screening and diagnosis and treatment of bsc particularly of the high risk groups providing linkage including with the private sector and non profit organization that's uh, already indicated here but how it is going to be implemented is a challenge and community engagement because unless the community participates actively and there is a good possibility of that as shown by punjab this treatment may remain uh, only on paper so good uh, initiative that we involve the communities particularly those who are at risk next please the operational guidelines did mention about what tests has to be performed at what level the center of excellence the sentinel sites which are mainly the state uh, big un, uh, institutions state and district sites as well as at the primary level primary health centers health and wellness centers and sub centers so the tests that are going to be uh, can be done at each level are indicated in these guidelines now the challenge is the referral system because at primary level the numbers would be large but to send the samples upwards to the state and sentinel sites is a challenge the logistic management thereof next please another important uh, uh, operational guideline is convergence of this program with various other programs including national aids control program because as you know sexual routes and injecting uh, drug abusers are important uh, you know risk uh, groups blood safety program injection safety program and immunization program particularly because hepatitis b vaccine is to be given through that all are important focusing on hepatitis b and c whereas the other programs on the left side are towards uh, hepatitis a and e which is water and food bond integrated disease surveillance project is one project which will virtually monitor if there's any resurgence or any outbreaks of hepatitis a and e So very rarely but there could be even outbreaks of hepatitis b as was i think noticed in 1983 in, in gujarat so idsp is virtually a common uh, program that virtually monitors the disease occurrences next please and so finally the challenge is universal screening would be a challenge for all pregnant women about 225 million every year screening of hepatitis b is in high risk population because of stigma and other factors very difficult to reach to drug users msm and female sex workers and identifying them and bringing them to the laboratories for screening would be a challenge appropriate technology at various levels in the in the large public health indian healthcare system would be also a challenge particularly reaching the unreached population urban poor communities as well as rural remote populations 
modalities for referral and logistic systems and feedback would be also a challenge, but I think IT solutions can help in this particular thing. And while government does mention about uh, involvement of private uh, laboratory networks and pri other private partners, but strategies and schemes to actualize this particular partnership would be a challenge. And convergence of various vertical programs, it's easy said than done. I already seen this challenge in hepatitis in HIV AIDS program, which I was leading for six years, uh, about eight years back. So those are the challenges which I thought I will share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for that excellent presentation and really uh, very, very exciting to see uh, the country of India uh, put out a national plan of, of that much detail and really begin to confront those challenges. Uh, now let's turn uh, to um, uh, to Dr. Serene to uh, to look at, look at some uh, different uh, models of um, providing uh, testing, and uh, we've heard a little bit about that in Punjab, which we'll hear a little bit more about from Dr. Serene as well as from Egypt. But I really look forward to Dr. Serene to going into some more detail about how do you uh, deliver testing uh, effectively in, in different clinical settings, Dr. Serene. Thank you, Dr. Ward. I yes. hope you're able to see my screen. Well, uh, a very good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening uh, uh, to my fellow presenters and uh, to the viewers and listeners uh, across the world who are tuned into this uh, first Asia Pacific Hepatitis Summit, which is being conducted virtually. Uh, we are. All, I'm also thankful to the organizers uh, for giving us this opportunity to talk about the work that Pine has been doing in the space of increasing access to HCV diagnostics. Uh, so the talk, as uh, Dr. Ward said, will focus on you know, how uh, some of our decentralized programmatic models uh, uh, have helped in increasing access to hepatitis testing in high disease burden countries. Very quickly about FIND, uh, we are a global nonprofit uh, and are engaged in the development and delivery of diagnostic solutions to combat major diseases of poverty. We are a WHO collaborating center for Diagnostics and also a Sage IVD member, and uh, our ISO certified for quality system, quality uh, management systems for clinical trials. We work in six areas: uh, disease areas ranging from AMR uh, to hepatitis and HIV, malaria and fevers, tuberculosis, pandemic preparedness, and uh, neglected tropical diseases. Uh, coming to hepatitis C, over 71 million people are living with HCV with less than 20% of them having been diagnosed so far. On top of that, we need to find over 50 million people uh, exposed to HCV by 2030 and then link them to care in a cost efficient manner. So how do we do this? We need to look at opportunities for uh, decentralized risk-based screening strategies, you know, at places where people are already accessing care. Uh, which means that bringing uh, screening, confirmation, and uh, treatment closest to the patient. Looking at opportunities to conduct reflex testing to reduce the number of steps in a diagnostic algorithm, both for confirmation as well as for staging, and eventually, you know, uh, decentralizing the treatment by bringing it as close to the patient. Coming to the Head Start project, this is a project that we've been implemented uh, with the support of Unit 8. Uh, it basically stands for Hepatitis C Elimination Through Access to Diagnostics. It has four pillars, you know, focused around accelerating the diagnostic pipeline to increase the number of diagnostic tools available for rapid diagnosis, a diagnosis of HCV. In-country work, which is something which we'll talk about in today's presentation, uh, preparing the market uh, for use of uh, simplified simplified integrating HCV diagnostics, market forecasting, you know, in terms of, this is something which is very critical uh, data, which needs to be provided to manufacturers for them to be able to invest their uh, R&D dollars. And then last but not least, evidence sharing to inform global, regional and country uh, policy uh, for more simplified and integrated HCV diagnostics algorithms. Uh, this is a quick snapshot of the uh, you know Head Start project that we are implementing in uh, 
uh, various is uh, in four countries. Uh, these countries include India. Uh, and India, we are basically implementing in Manipur, in uh, then in Myanmar, uh, and then uh, Malaysia. Uh, so these are uh, these are the various countries where we are implementing the program. So basically, working across four countries in both high risk groups as well as general populations, implementing a mix of fully sent, fully decentralized, and partially decentralized models using point of care diagnostics for screening, point of care diagnostics, as well as uh, high throughput NATs for RNA confirmation and a variety of treatment options in order to rapidly link patients, those who are confirmed for HCV RNA in treatment. Uh, this is a snapshot of the work that we are doing in uh, Malaysia. You know, as you can see on the right hand side, the patients have basically been rapidly screened for uh, HCV antibodies through the HCV RDTs. Those who test positive, uh, they are then referred to uh, uh, select hospitals where their samples are collected for HCV RNA testing. These RNA samples are then transported to a central reference lab where they are tested using a high throughput NAT. The treatment in turn is offered. Uh, so from a patient's perspective, they actually themselves don't need to go to the referral lab. And uh, they then are able to access treatment at the selected hospitals where uh, they have submitted their samples for uh, post RNA testing as well as for baseline clinical investigations. Uh, so Malaysia overall has a prevalence of less than 1% uh, as far as the general population is concerned. But uh, as you can see by using uh, a strategy of uh, uh, risk-based screening, uh, we were able to get a particularly high yield of almost 13% uh, in a cohort of 15,148 who were screened using HCV antibody tests. Uh, in addition to that, we also used a, a sort of an education campaign around the screening facilities, primarily to educate uh, those with the, with, with the symptoms uh, or possible symptoms or risks associated with, the, with, with contracting HCV. Uh, as you can see that the others or the undisclosed category, this was a specific category that was created under the, under the population, which actually allowed the people to walk into the centers and getting themselves screened in a way that they felt comfortable without necessarily disclosing their samples. So these two strategies actually resulted in a very high yield as compared to the overall uh, general population as far as the, uh, this project is concerned. Overall, the cost per patient identified uh, was also on a lower side at about $6.24. Coming to Punjab, Dr. Grover has already spoken about this. Uh, so on the left, you see the Punjab map. This project basically introduced integrated HCV care into 13 existing ARD centers. We simplify the algorithm by uh, switching to uh, rapid diagnostic tests. And uh, we're also able to perform reflex RNA testing for those who screen HCV antibody positive by collecting their samples and referring them to one of the four gene expert testing hubs which were established in the district facilities. Uh, this model was particularly effective at, as it helped us in reaching over 80% of all people attending ART care with HCV screening. Uh, we found a high positivity of 20% uh, RDT positive and the cost per patient identified was also pretty much on a lower side, primarily again underlining uh, the need for a risk-based, uh, you know, uh, risk-based screening as far as this particular strategy is concerned. In terms of the highest risk of having been exposed to HCV, you know, males, you know, uh, they were at a higher risk uh, as compared to the women. Then those aged 21 to 30 years old were found to be particularly vulnerable, and also uh, those with a history of intravenous drug use uh, were others who, were, who fell amongst the highest risk of having those having been exposed to HCV. Uh, the, the second project which we implemented in India was in partnership with the Institute of Liver and Binary Sciences as well as the Directorate of Health Services in Delhi. Uh, as a part of this model, HCV care was introduced into existing polyclinics or primary health clinics and five district hospitals were established, which also served as uh, hospitals where uh, the patients were not only screened, but their samples were collected uh, uh, for those who tested as antibody positive. These five district hospitals were also developed as model treatment centers. Uh, as a part of the algorithm, uh, the patients were screened at both the primary healthcare centers or the polyclinics, as well as these five district hospitals. From there on, their samples uh, were transported from uh, any of the five district hospitals to ILBS, where they were confirmed using uh, an Abbott platform. So in terms of, as you can see from this slide, uh, you know, our goal here was to simplify uh, the entire algorithm 
or the patient care casket. In the first visit itself, the patients were screened uh, and their blood was collected for the RNA test as well as the baseline investigations. From there, the samples were referred to ILBS. In the second set, in the second visit, uh, you know, uh, once we received the results of the RNA uh, testing and the laboratory in, uh, investigations, the patients were initiated on DA therapy. And in an overall visit, about seven visits, you know, till the SPR12 was achieved. Uh, this model again demonstrated over 86% of those uh, screened getting an RNA test and 82% of those who tested RNA, RNA positive were initiated on treatment. Again, uh, you know, highlighting uh, the simplicity of the patient care casket as well as uh, the reducing the number of overall steps uh, uh, in the care casket. The other study that we implemented was in uh, Myanmar. Uh, it was uh, a study which was implemented in collaboration with the Gannett Institute as well as the Myanmar Liver Foundation. Uh, and the target population here, people with injecting drugs, drug use, and there were certain adults who attended a charity liver clinic. Uh, as far as CT2 stands for Community Test and Treat. Uh, and here again, as you can see, this was a, a complete one-stop shop right from the screening of the suspects to putting these uh, suspects on treatment. And as you can see, the total turnaround time from receiving a confirmed RNA test to DA prescription, including this specialist reviews was, you know, four days for the Burnett Institute Clinic and about two days for the uh, Liver Foundation Clinic. Again, demonstrated, again demonstrating that, uh, you know, an excellent attention uh, of the patients throughout the entire casket with 99% of those confirming for RNA uh, getting initiated on the treatment. Key takeaways as far as these models are concerned, uh, screening can be a main driver of cost in low prevalence settings, and it is critical to consider risk-based screening criteria and also consider uh, targeted education campaigns in order to drive the patients uh, in for testing. As we could see, Malaysia uh, had a, had a, where we used a risk-based screening strategy, the cost per patient identified was $6.24 as compared to Delhi, where it was much higher at $27. Uh, it, we also developed a diagnostic uh, pathway calculator tool, which also showed that a loss to follow up between the various steps of the uh, diagnostic care cascade also were a driver of time and cost. Hence, it's critical to uh, reduce the number of steps and make the algorithms as simple as possible. You know, you could consider reflex testing as was done in the case of Punjab uh, for confirmation using point of pillar molecular diagnostics or DBS as and when that becomes available. And also, you know, as we did in both uh, Myanmar as well as uh, in Delhi, consider the same time sample collection for both RNA testing as well as for uh, staging of the disease. The third critical takeaway uh, is the capital outlay. A siloed hepatitis program can be pretty expensive and, uh, you know, it can result in lower retention of patients because you have to specifically uh, target all of your resources towards uh, uh, conducting such programs. Hence, you know, one may need to consider integrating service delivery into the general health program. And this is something which is being done, uh, for example, in India under the auspices of the National Viral Hepatitis Control Program, where, you know, while it sounds quite vertical, as Dr. Bajani said, but, you know, at the end of the day, the goal is to integrate it into the health program and leverage whatever capabilities and facilities and expertise are available within the overall health program. Also, uh, as we demonstrated through all of these uh, service delivery models, simplification is the key in terms of increasing rapidly testing and, and linking patients to treatment. Uh, it is critical to make it easier for the patients by reducing the number of visits and simplifying the algorithm. As you saw in Georgia and Myanmar, point of care confirmatory testing resulted in a high linkage to confirmation confirmatory testing. In Punjab, uh, you know, again, more than 82 percent of the patients who screen positive were linked to RNA through a reflex RNA testing mechanism. And in both Head Start Delhi as well as Myanmar projects, uh, a single visit for, for both screening and blood draw for confirmation in liver staging resulted in a high treat retention in the care casket. So uh, as you make it easier, you know, it is basically less tests, which is also, you know, which means less uh, reduced monetary outlay and overall reduction in the cost as far as government budgets are concerned. Reducing the overall number of samples and visits to bring in algorithms algorithms in line with the WHO al uh, recommendations is something which the countries should look at. And, uh, you know, obviously quickest uh, is to remove the ultrasound from uh, 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 from the screening criteria as well as also remove uh, uh, genotyping 
uh, which is no longer recommended by WHO. So overall, uh, you know, the easier it is, uh, the, the bottom line is that easier it is for the patient, the better the retention will be in the care casket, making it more efficient and more cost effective. Very quickly, uh, I just wanted to leave you with uh, uh, a snapshot of the Head Start r and pipeline. Uh, we are conducting self-testing pilots across five sites uh, with the hope that, uh, you know, once this becomes validated, you know, this will further help improving access to screening. A core antigen RDT as a potential replacement of HCV RNA is also, which is, is in development, a point of care RDT. We are evaluating another point of care uh, viral load testing device known as Gene Drive. And it has, uh, you know, uh, the testing has been completed in Cameroon and Georgia. The expert finger stick assay, again, uh, as compared to the venous draw, uh, expected to further reduce the time to testing, uh, has been CE marked. Uh, an Indian technology wall bio, which has already been evaluated and recommended by WHO for TB testing, has now been, uh, you know, is being evaluated in Denmark, Ethiopia, Georgia, Thailand, and Ukraine. And we expect this validation to be complete. It should help, uh, you know, providing an alternative to the point of care expert essay and further bringing down the cost. We are in the process of validating uh, DBS protocols uh, and they have already been completed in Cameroon, Georgia and Greece, ongoing in, in Rwanda and a few other countries. Uh, so again, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and we would also like to thank uh, you know our teams as well as all of our Head Start partners and collaborators you know across the four countries where the project has been. In. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sareen. Uh, let's continue looking at uh, some um, uh, research in um, uh, new technologies for hepatitis B as well as hepatitis C testing from Dr. Rosanna Finley, who's here at the Diagnostic Research at the London School of um, Tropical Medicine and Hygiene and Director of the International Diagnostic Center uh, in London. Uh, Rosanna? Thank you very much for um, um, inviting me to, to give this talk. Um, what I'd like to do is to be able to, um, um, I don't seem to be able to share my screen. Uh, oh, there. Okay. Um, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem to, they still seem to have the fine slice there. Um, how is that possible? Um, I think you need to go to the tab application, uh, Dr. Rosanna, and then select the particular screen, which is uh -huh. your your deck. Okay. So application window. Yeah. And then click my screen. The, yes. Yeah. Okay. And then share. Uh, it's not. Can you click on? Be doing it. You're on application windows, you click your slides, not your screen. Just the, select the slides. Okay. That's it. Here we go, perhaps. Okay. Um, yeah, just can you, um, can you forward your slides now? Yeah. Um, I don't seem to be able yes. to control my slides. Could, could, could you control my slides um, controller or who, whoever? It is. Prasant, can you advance your slides? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I. Can you see my slides now? Yes. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, so what I'd like to do is to, to um, present some of the uh, innovations that have been um, tried to, that we have been trying to think about as we were um, putting together the uh, WHO hepatitis uh, testing guidelines. And so um, one part of what we did was trying to look at the technologies, uh, where they are, the, where they were at the time that we put together the guidelines in 2017. And then we also tried to look at um, how these technologies can be used in the most innovative way. So I'd like to start with um, saying that right now, um, if we look at the sustainable development goals, um, all the countries in the UN system have made a global pledge to leave no one behind. So community-based um, services 
um, is really important in terms of uh, disease uh, elimination and also reaching um, uh, SDG target three, which is to have healthy lives. And, and I think that for um, traditionally, uh, hepatitis testing has been in the hands of specialists and uh, care, especially um, uh, being limited to um, referral to, to a specialist. And so in many countries, that policies change has to, um, has to uh, be developed still for uh, more community-based um, uh, care uh, and screening. If we start with hepatitis B, uh, we already know from the previous uh, presentations the, the burden of hepatitis B in this world. But what I like to say is that the, uh, the most um, um, exciting uh, elimination uh, target is the mother-to-child transmission of HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis B. It started with a dual elimination of um, mother-to-child transmission of um, uh, HIV and syphilis, and uh, many countries have um, committed to that dual elimination. But in the last few years, many more countries have now uh, committed to the triple elimination of, um, of uh, mother to child transmission of HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis B. And we know that um, uh, if infants in, uh, were infected with hepatitis B during the first year of their life, 90% of those would go on to develop uh, a chronic infection. And, um, and that's really important to keep in mind as, as we think about um, how to use technology to help us with, the, uh, with thinking uh, of the elimination. And hepatitis tests are now part of um, uh, the uh, essential diagnostics uh, list for WHO. So here I show uh, a, a tiered approach to the elimination of mother to child transmission of hepatitis B, starting um, at the community level with giving the baby a birth dose, uh, preferably within um, 24 or 48 hours of birth, and then have follow-up doses. But we also, at the higher levels of the healthcare system, make sure that uh, pregnant women are screened and uh, providing linkage to care and follow-up of exposed infants. And then, of course, um, for hepatitis B in general, um, uh, getting more people vaccinated is, is the uh, biggest approach to prevention of chronic infection. And uh, But so for now, do we have um, good tests that we could use in communities to screen for uh, hepatitis B. We know that uh, hepatitis B service antigen in serum is a surrogate marker of um, uh, activity of um, uh, DNA transcription activity for hepatitis B. And that clearance of the service uh, antigen is associated with a functional remission of chronic uh, HPV and improve long-term outcomes. So we want to be able to um, to use rapid tests in communities to screen and how good are they. So as part of the uh, development of the WHO hepatitis testing guidelines, um, the um, I led a, a team of uh, research fellows to look at a systematic review of rapid tests for hepatitis uh, service antigen detection. And, um, and there were um, over 30 brands of, of these tests um, that had been evaluated. And we could see that on the whole, the uh, pooled sensitivity of um, these rapid tests are about 92% compared to uh, a lab-based assay. And their specificity is uh, also really uh, close to 100% compared to a lab-based assay. The only caution is that in, in the six studies that have I, uh, definitely identified or separated um, hepatitis, uh, HIV positive from HIV negative patients, um, the detection, the same rapid tests that are used uh, for detecting um, 
hepatitis service antigen uh, for other populations. In those who are HIV positive, they seem to uh, not do so well. The sensitivity is down to about 73%. So we don't really recommend the, the use of um, these RDTs for HIV positive patients. Uh, we, um, we recommend that um, uh, control programs use uh, lab-based uh, immunoassays for, for the screening. And you could find the reference in, the, in this um, infectious disease uh, um, supplement that was published together with the guidelines. Now for hepatitis C, we also um, try to look at um, uh, screening. And there's been quite a lot of discussion uh, already about um, whether we, how do we make uh, screening uh, uh, cost effective? And I think that if we look at the uh, cost of an entire program with um, uh, millions of people that are still undiagnosed and the cost of the um, of cirrhosis and stage liver disease, transplantation and, uh, and uh, uh, liver uh, carcinoma, I, th I, I think it, it really makes a lot of sense uh, right now to do a lot more screening than we do now to be able to um, uh, tip the balance so that um, so that we have uh, less uh, sequelae and have more e uh, uh, effective uh, control programs, and um, and over time turning off the tap by increasing screening uh, would would be shown to be the most um, highly cost effective intervention to begin with, and so. Um, do we have um, uh, this, the, the, what is the best way uh, to do screening? And um, I, I want to show on the left side, uh, two diagrams that was in the, in the UNITAID uh, document um, uh, in 2013. And that was um, done at the beginning of the introduction of DAAs when DAAs were not widely available and extremely expensive. But we show that because they, um, you no longer have to look at uh, genotyping, you no longer have to do a lot of other um, uh, 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 lab tests to know um, whether the patient is still having a, uh, a lot of uh, viral load. Um, there's a lot of monitoring that has to go on, but with uh, with the directing uh, direct acting uh, antivirals, we could actually simplify the the whole um, testing part of uh, testing and monitoring part of um, uh, the program uh, with just screening with an RDT and using a qualitative um, uh, RNA test or uh, a core antigen test to confirm and then just do a, a, a test of cure at the end without um, a lot of um, uh, monitoring in between. So um, in, in that report, they show that um, the cost of uh, 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 the program uh, for a person in terms of uh, testing uh, and all the other uh, monitoring cost would decrease from about a um, thousand uh, dollars to about a hundred twenty dollars at the most and so um, we we heard just now about the different programs where identifying uh, a patient could be as low as six dollars um, um, which is really really uh, good news but we want to we want to um, besides making it more uh, simple and uh, wanting it to be uh, cheaper. We also want to make it easier for a patient uh, because a patient-centered testing strategy, which is what WHO is advocating now, rather than having disease silos so that uh, um, you know a, a person who, uh, for example, men who have sex with men, intravenous drug users that are at risk of HIV 
uh, and HCV and syphilis um, wouldn't have to go to three different places to get screened and, and to get their care. And, uh, and so having patient-centered testing strategies using multiplex tests uh, would be really important. And the same goes for um, um, uh, antenatal uh, clinics, uh, being able to offer HIV, syphilis, and HPV uh, screening for pregnant women. Um, I think in the fine popul uh, uh, presentation, you heard about the, the use of um, uh, dry blood spots uh, as, uh, for and, and core antigen. These are still being uh, tried out in, in terms of uh, further increasing access to those uh, who may not live at a place where there is molecular testing, uh, even point of care molecular testing available. Uh, for rapid tests, uh, there are, uh, for HCV, there are oral tests available, um, and um, uh, as well as blood-based tests. And so more options and possibly um, to be able to uh, do self-testing at home, that's another um, um, option. Now, with um, right now, in the last six months, a lot of countries have ramped up their ability to do molecular testing because of COVID. And so um, um, we are trying to advocate for um, integrated testing services so that um, um, these machines that are um, bought because of COVID, because, bought because of HIV and, and syphilis, um, could be used for um, molecular testing at the point of care and uh, to allow easier access for, um, for molecular testing. And also, the, um, uh, both some of the rapid tests and all of the point of care molecular tests have data transmission possibilities. So it's possible that um, you could use data connectivity to try and monitor the quality of the care, uh, both for the individual and along uh, the cascade of care for, for, the, for the cohort. Now, the, the um, rapid test for HCV antibodies, actually um, the performance, the pool sensitivity and specificity both are very good. Uh, the pool performance of uh, the RDTs are about 97% compared to a lab-based test, and uh, the pool sensitivity is about 100%. And, um, and uh, if you see on the, um, in the table on the left, um, in, uh, with oral samples, uh, the pool sensitivity is at 94%, which is a, a bit lower than and those for blood samples, but they offer uh, the convenience of being able to, to be done in the privacy of your own home uh, or, uh, you know, uh, do self-testing. And so, so I think that um, there are lots of options uh, as to what, what you could use. Um, I also show here some of the, um, um, the multiplex tests um, uh, that have been um, developed by a couple of companies. Um, so the, uh, the table above shows a, a systematic review of all the rapid tests for HCV that we could find. But the table below is just taken uh, from the, um, uh, uh, an evaluation uh, that was uh, done um, on these multiplex tests. And, um, and they've, but they've not been widely um, uh, validated. And so that remains to be done so that um, uh, we could offer multiplex testing uh, as a, a patient center approach. Um, it, in the middle, you could see that there there is a rapid test with a small reader, and, uh, and that clicks onto the window of the test, and that allows not only um, the interpretation of the test results um, using a machine, but also data to be transmitted uh, to a central database if necessary. Um, so. What, what I um, like to say here is that um, rapid tests really um, 
can be used with the same finger, for example, uh, even though their sensitivity may be slightly less than a lab basin, say. Um, it's very convenient and uh, gives you results in 15 to 20 minutes compared to a lab based assay where you need uh, uh, the phlebotomist to take uh, venous blood and uh, requires uh, laboratory infrastructure and equipment. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Peeling, because that is essentially two needs to um, at the moment if you wrap up. Yeah, so I, I just have two more slides. So what we like to do is to have uh, a population uh, based uh, testing in, um, and also in a different setting. And that uh, if we target uh, populations that are most at risk, then uh, uh, micro elimination is possible. And so in the last slide, I want to show you the innovation that have been uh, identified. Uh, so uh, during the uh, testing guidelines, we started um, to have a crowdsourcing contest uh, to, uh, for, for people to come forward with innovations that they started in their own country. And um, there were a lot of entries and we selected 16 of those and they're featured in the testing guidelines. Uh, at the WHO guidelines, and I just show a few of these. So thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you all the speakers for um, touching on a number of important issues around testing. We're going to continue uh, exploring uh, these different components of testing in, in session two. Uh, Prasant, just to inform everybody how to um, move into session two, please. Yeah, we request to everyone to go to session two. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.